Okay, so again, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Andrea Opit. I'm the uh, deputy uh, at Spider. Uh, so thank you for being interested in this uh, Spider workshop. And uh, I immediately give the word uh, to the lead of this work package. Uh, Nicola Andre is online. So thank you. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I hope you have a good time in uh, Bratislava. I've never been there, so I'm quite sad not to be with, with you. Uh, but um, uh, let's see how we can do that uh, remotely. Uh, thank uh, also to, to Sébastien S, who will be the, the next speaker and who is uh, with you um, to, to help me with uh, some presentation during this session. I will try to, to share my, uh, my video. So I will describe you uh, in the first part of this uh, workshop. Uh, what is SPIDER, what are the services we provide to the community, and uh, what are the benefits you can uh, have using our services. And to, to start, SPIDER is an acronym for Sun Planet Interactions, Digital Environment and Request. So it is about planetary space weather, the interaction between the sun, solar disturbance, and uh, planets, comets, solar system bodies, or spacecraft uh, in the heliosphere. This is a digital environment. We provide some resource, numerical resource from observations or simulations. And on request, that's because we try to, to develop an infrastructure in order to be able to, to, to in order to enable run a request for the users using some, uh, some platforms I will describe to you. So this is a long lasting uh, activity in uh, your planet. We had the previous Europlanet research infrastructure uh, from 2016 or 15 to 2019, where we started these uh, activities with the name PSWS for Planetary Space Weather Services. This was the first time we thought there is something to do about this particular topic. You can see here the screen of the uh, portal we, we have uh, set up. This is now linked with the spider, which is a follow-up of these activities. You have the address there if you if you want to to go and and see uh, in more details uh, what uh, we have developed. Uh, and we got about eight thousand viewers on this page, which is quite good. So it means that this is something uh, people are attracted with, and this is something they they can use uh, for their uh, their own studies and uh, and better understanding of the on the environment. This uh, PSWS, so this is about planetary space weather. Space weather is a very big field uh, at Earth. You know that there are many, many uh, activities, many, many actors, many, many things to, to develop um, to understand the relation between solar disturbance and uh, spacecraft orbiting the Earth or the Earth's environment. In particular, industries are very interested to, to be able to, to predict in advance the arrival of disturbance to detect them and also to model their effect on, uh, on the planetary environment, the Earth, but mainly on, uh, on the spacecraft. For planets, uh, similar activities were uh, only uh, available uh, in, uh, in small bricks. There was no links between uh, all of them. Uh, and we thought that we, we should propose something in order to, to cope with that particular um, aspect and try to, to bring uh, planetary communities something equivalent to, to what uh, is existing uh, for the Earth. So together with uh, a few partners, so CNRS in France, Univers University of Aberystwyth Suisse in Wales, University of uh, Pays Basco uh, in, uh, in Spain, uh, a small company called uh, GFE in France, which is a, a, a computing uh, facility company, uh, CBK in, uh, in Poland, the Institute of Atmospheric Physics in Czech Republic, University College London in the UK, the German Aerospace Center in Cologne, Germany, and uh, Wigner with, uh, with Andrea Opitz, uh, who is uh, in the room. We started this, uh, this development and these very first services. So I remind you the objective of this activity is to review, to test, to improve, and to adapt methods and tools available within the partner institutes in order to make a prototype planetary event and space weather service operational in Europe 
at the end of the program. And it was uh, also a good time to do that because we had uh, we were very lucky. We had a very um, uh, sophisticated and interesting uh, spacecraft uh, orbiting or about to to be launched during that time period, 2015-2019. We had the NASA Maven missions, so you probably uh, know a bit about it. So this is a, a mission around Mars trying to understand uh, the erosion of the atmosphere of the planet and how molecules escape from this atmosphere, and in particular water. And this was directly linked with space weather uh, because uh, we thought the solar wind influenced this erosion of the atmosphere. And with MAVEN, we demonstrated this is the case. So this was uh, the perfect uh, spacecraft to, to, to initiate our activities. And also at the same time, ESA, the European Space Agency, has the MEX Mars Express spacecraft around the, the planet. So we have two point measurements, which is crucial in order to understand the sun-planet interactions, because you can have one spacecraft in the solar wind, very close to the planet, and the other one uh, a bit far, uh, further uh, clo or closer to, to the planet. We had also Juno, a NASA-led mission in orbit around Jupiter. It's the first time we got a, a polar orbiter in order to study the interior of a planet, its magnetic field, but also its auroral emissions. Also, many of the auroral emissions at Jupiter are not driven by solar wind uh, uh, interaction. Some of them are, in particular, the polar emission. And so it was also very uh, interesting for us to test our services with respect to that, those observations and to this particular mission. In addition, we have many, many uh, observations close to the Earth in the solar wind, in particular in a specific point in space called the Lagrangian point, L1, where we got the measurements and we developed some um, tools and services. I will show you uh, how they work in order to propagate this observation of Earth to other uh, planetary um, uh, bodies and in particular Jupiter, following the flow of plasma uh, coming from the Sun, reaching the Earth, and then reaching Jupiter. We had also, and this was a bit, uh, this has a bit changed now, ExoMars, the first European mission landing at the surface uh, of the Moon, so completing the, the puzzle of uh, and, and uh, uh, the, the architecture of space mission around the planets, with, for the first time, planet, uh, missions uh, from ESA orbiting the planet and reaching its surface. So also two-point measurements uh, trying to um, helping us to decipher how solar wind disturbance uh, propagate from the sun to the external environment, to the atmosphere, and to the surface. We had also Rosetta, and this was a, a cornerstone mission from the European Space Agency with many, many um, uh, involvement uh, from uh, European institutes, uh, which was uh, orbiting the comet uh, uh, 67P and uh, reaching the, the end of the mission during the program. And we had to prepare Bepi Colombo, a mission to be launched to Mercury, and JUICE, the first uh, large class mission of ESA, to be launched after the program. So we really wanted to take advantage of all these missions in order to see what we can provide to the, to the community. And this is here a summary of what we have developed during that program. So 12 services, and we can divide them into four domains. The first one is a domain in order to, to predict solar wind disturbance or uh, solar system events. To predict uh, solar, the properties of solar wind disturbance, we had two tools, a propagation tool developed and adapted to our needs, and a, a, a heliopropa uh, simulation using a simple mode, a more simple model, a 1D magneto-hydrodynamic uh, propagation uh, simulation in order to do that. For a solar system uh, event, we targeted in particular uh, cometary tail crossing. You may know that when a, a spacecraft is in a cruise phase in the heliosphere, it may sometimes um, cross um, uh, matter coming from a, a distant comet, which, uh, when they approach uh, the sun, uh, create uh, gas, dust, or a charged particle, and then long uh, coma which can be crossed by this uh, interplanetary, this spacecraft in interplanetary space. So we developed something in order to be able to, to check this uh, with our uh, partners. And the last uh, about prediction was to predict the meteor showers. You, you know that at Earth, uh, especially in, uh, in winter or uh, even in summer, you can see this, um, this meteorites 
uh, in the meteors uh, in the Earth's atmosphere. There is the same and the equivalent at planets. Uh, and this is important because they can also create some, uh, some disturbance of the planetary environment, uh, some disturbance to the planetary spacecraft that orbit this, uh, this uh, planet. And so it was important to be able to, to detect, uh, to predict their arrival and effect uh, at other bodies and Earth. And we were lucky because when MAVEN, so NASA-led mission, arrived in orbit to Mars, there was uh, some matter uh, released by a comet uh, that uh, disturbed the environment of the planet with some uh, mitigation to be implemented in order to protect a spacecraft like Mars Express. So it was also timely uh, to, to check and uh, test our system for that. So the second part is uh, about detecting. So detecting some uh, solar system events like fireballs at giant planets. Uh, Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system. It is uh, hit and bombarded by comets in all the history uh, as other uh, planets. And we have witnessed the, this uh, spe specific interaction uh, during our lifetime. It was in 1994, for example. Comet Schumacher-Lavie broke into several pieces that reached the atmosphere of the planet, uh, collide uh, with it and disturb the atmosphere during a very, very long period of times, um, years, decades, and we can still witness the effect of this particular interaction. And this was also a specific service uh, targeting um, uh, another community, other users, mainly amateurs, and this is something, uh, this is, uh, something that is still um, uh, at the root of uh, the European programs try to bring uh, all the community interested by uh, planetary activities together. And so this was also a service for that. And we had the same for the lunar impact. So uh, flash uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, matter uh, when uh, impactors uh, collide with the lunar surface. And we had also something about analysis of cometary tails. We have many um, uh, images of comets where you can see the development of the tail, dust and uh, plasma tail. Uh, and we wanted to, to try to use that in order to, to, to use these comets as a virtual monitor of the solar wind properties, uh, try to, to uh, deduce the, the solar wind properties from the observation of uh, the development of cometary tails. The third activity was uh, to, to model the sun-planet uh, interactions, in particular uh, the Martian radiation environment in the atmosphere and at the surface. The magneto disk of giant planets, you know that uh, Jupiter and Saturn have strong magnetic fields. They have a plasma source located deep within the magnetic cavity, the magnetosphere created by this magnetic field. And uh, the interplay between the source of plasma, the fast rotation of the planet, and the magnetic field uh, of, uh, of the planet creates some uh, magnetized disk of, uh, of plasma. And we wanted to model this in order to be able to couple uh, events occurring inside the magnetosphere with uh, the auroral emissions uh, observed by Juno in particular. And we had also a, a service called Transplanet to model uh, the Sun-Planet interaction at Earth, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. And all these uh, four uh, models were developed uh, within a particular run and request architecture uh, where the users can now run uh, some, uh, some, um, their own simulation, archive them, and use them with different tools. And the final uh, domain was uh, uh, alert system in order to be able to alert the community when a particular solar wind disturbance arrive at a, at a target, or when a particular solar system event uh, occur, um, uh, so that they can react, uh, either uh, turn on or off their instrument, ask for uh, ground-based or space-based observation in order to, to monitor uh, this uh, transient and this um, particular event. So these were all the services developed at that time. They are, uh, most of them uh, were finished in 2019, at the end of the first Europlanet Research Infrastructure Program. Most of them are still open now and can be used. Some of them uh, have not been uh, fully uh, made sustainable, in particular uh, those led by uh, some partners in, in the UK, and we are working on that in order to help. Uh, so that we still maintain these 12 services and made the, them accessible and usable uh, to you.
our users, uh, this was in the last slide I forgot to mention, uh, are scientists, amateurs, space agencies, with which uh, we that have the, uh, all the spacecraft uh, in, the, in the solar system, and also uh, industries. Uh, for some particular case, uh, they are interested by uh, by our developments, in particular to to predict um, uh, the effect of solar wind disturbance uh, in particular environment. So I start with uh, this. Uh, this service developed to predict uh, the properties of solar wind uh, at various planets. We uh, used a 1D magneto hydrodynamic simulation developed by uh, a postdoc at IRA, uh, a small uh, uh, Japanese female, Shiro Tao. Uh, she spent two years in our lab. She provided us with uh, the executable for this code, and we implemented it in order to, to propagate disturbance uh, forward from the Earth to uh, planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, but also uh, backward to Venus and to Mercury. And we extend this, um, this uh, simulation uh, to, to spacecraft uh, in full space or orbiting planets uh, or comets uh, even. So uh, this system is available online. You have the address there. You can connect. You can choose the input parameters you want to, to use from uh, the Lagrangian point L1 from spacecraft like stereo orbiting uh, in the uh, heliosphere at different uh, locations or from missions uh, like solar orbiter uh, which is currently under development and then you can choose the targets of your um, propagations all the planets the comets and some probes in particular those having long lasting cruise phase like bepi colombo solar orbiter parker solar probe rosetta uh, juno then you see the outputs of the models First, you see the location of the planets in the solar system. This helps you to understand if the prediction is reliable or not. And then you see the parameters, uh, the output parameters of, of the simulations at the specific targets. The density, the temperature, the dynamic pressure, the tangential magnetic field. And uh, from this long uh, lasting time series, three months, you can choose also the start and stop time uh, of this, of course. You can see uh, the arrival of various uh, solar wind disturbance, coronal mass ejections, corrotating interaction regions. And then you can zoom on, zoom out on this particular uh, uh, time series and really identify uh, some specific event you would like to, to work with. And so this is fully operational uh, and, uh, and usable to, to you. I will illustrate in the in the second part this morning how what you can do with uh, with that particular uh, uh, and how you can benefit from this system. We had also a propagation tool, which is also a tool available online. You can see uh, the address here. This tool was existing at the start of the project, but it was mainly targeting the Earth. So we extend that tool in order to target also comets and all other planets including the, the giant planets and we add a, a particular plugin uh, in order to to follow a solar wind disturbance uh, and predict its arrival time at a planet here it's illustrated for saturn we follow the the propagation of a, a particular disturbance uh, at saturn and then we ask the system uh, to check if there exists some remote sensing observation of the planet at that time in particular from a uh, Hubble Space Telescope uh, for the UV auroral emissions. And if yes, the system returns uh, the, the, the availability of the data and the preview of the data so that you can check that the system predicts the arrival of a particular disturbance at that time at Saturn. And, uh, the, and uh, the system tells you that at that particular time, when you expect the effect of a solar wind disturbance, you have access to remote uh, observation of the UV auroral emissions of the planet. And you can see here a small uh, storm developing at the time when we, we predicted the arrival of the solar wind disturbance. Uh, and this is uh, something uh, that uh, scientists are used to do, combine in situ measurements with remote sensing measurements from uh, space-based uh, observatories, ground-based observatories, uh, and this tool uh, help us uh, and uh, them to, to link uh, really uh, what's happening close to the sun to what's happening uh, in the planetary environment. 
Then we have this uh, um, targeting amateurs. So we developed a software with a particular uh, amateur, uh, Marc Delcroix, who is very well known, in order to, to use some uh, ground-based observation of uh, Jupiter with a small uh, telescope or uh, up to one meter telescope. Uh, and uh, when the amateur, uh, and to enable amateur to detect uh, uh, fireball impacting the atmosphere uh, at Jupiter. This was uh, also used um, uh, to develop uh, an archive of, uh, of image, which is hosted uh, with Vespa. You have maybe, maybe seen uh, the, the Vespa services yesterday, and which was developed by our colleague Ricardo Hueso, uh, in particular in the University of uh, País Vasco in Spain. So the software takes the picture obtained by the amateur and uh, using some um, sophisticated, sophisticated algorithm is uh, spotting if a fireball uh, has been observed during that time. We had a very efficient connection with the amateur community to do that. Uh, thanks to, um, to this uh, service, we were able to, to show that uh, almost every year, six to seven fireballs impact on average the planet, which is quite consequent. And since Jupiter is a very easy planet to observe, uh, we have many uh, amateur observations of the planet, and so many more candidates to analyze in order to, to really check uh, the availability of these, uh, of these fireballs. And why it's important? So here it's a database developed uh, in the frame of, uh, of Vespa, uh, PIVOL, where the Jovian impact uh, and uh, the positive detection are stored either at Jupiter, you can see here one fireball, or we targeted also Saturn, uh, despite the fact it's a bit more difficult to, 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 to detect with the system, we are at the, at the limit of uh, detection. And why it's important to, to do that? That's because it is really a field where amateur and scientists work together, closely together. We start with the amateur observation, they observe for their own pleasure uh, the planet, and then they use uh, the, the detect algorithm to identify a fireball, and they found one. Uh, so they detect it with a service, and what do they do when they detect? They alert the community. They say, oh, yesterday uh, at uh, 12, 12.20 uh, uh, in the night, I have seen a fireball at Jupiter. And so the other amateur check if they have uh, pictures, if they can also see the fireballs and its uh, effect on the planetary environment. And then the scientists say, oh, that's a huge one. It's very important for us to try to, to have the, the big system, the big observatory is looking at, uh, at Jupiter now because we will see the effect of this fireball uh, on the planetary environment. And so we, 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 we propose some, uh, some uh, following uh, observations of this event uh, with the big observatories. And then uh, we have uh, the media also is, uh, is alerted in order to, to make um, the story popular and get more people involved in this uh, particular uh, detection. And then we have workshop organized at Europlanet uh, Planetary Science Congress at uh, different uh, locations in order to, to really uh, uh, have everybody involved uh, and discuss the event. And then finally, we have an archive of the uh, of the uh, of all these observations, the virtual observatory Vespa, and we publish the results. And this was very efficient in the last program. We had very nice stories to tell about this, and we are glad that that was developed and still used uh, by all this community. Here is the slide showing the run and request architecture we have developed at CNRS in order to enable the user to make dedicated run uh, from, uh, from the web, uh, archive uh, the run and use them. So we had um, a very small um, tool, a simple tool to try to predict at particular uh, location at Mars, what is the, the radiation level, the radiation dose, someone, uh, a system or a, a human may, uh, may, uh, may, may see uh, in terms of uh, latitude, longitude. And this was done by uh, propagating the spectra of solar wind disturbance, uh, in particular energetic particles, uh, towards the surface uh, with all the interaction in the atmosphere. We have also a second run and request system for the modeling of the magneto disk of giant planets, Jupiter and Saturn. When you set up uh, two simple parameters uh, in order to, to have the, the effect of the solar wind uh, compression on, uh, or our reflection, and you get the outputs uh, in order to be able to, to, to map 
uh, specific position inside the magnetosphere to their uh, auroral uh, counterparts uh, to map electromagnetically. And we have the, the bigger uh, random request uh, system, which enable you to study the planet-sun uh, interaction at Earth, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter, where you can uh, define uh, the species in the atmosphere of each planet, uh, some particular uh, aspect of their atmosphere, of their magnetic field, and then launch a run in order to, to check uh, how the, the sun planet behaves at some, uh, for some particular uh, event. And this system is uh, shown here. So it's a more sophisticated model compared to the other one with various uh, boxes to simulate the planetary environment. It's uh, electron content, ion content, neutral content. So multi-phase uh, interactions between all this matter, uh, in particular, uh, the external driver coming from the sun, photons or uh, charged particles from the solar wind, uh, and um, uh, uh, etc and uh, important uh, for us uh, you do a run with our own uh, computers at cnrs but uh, you can use your run but the run is also made available to others in case they want to do something similar exactly the same or get inspiration from that run and so it is also important to have this because then uh, the community can uh, make benefit also uh, of all these runs made by uh, by uh, by colleagues it was important for us to develop all these services and make them compliant with the virtual observatory. You, you have seen on, uh, on Monday, in particular, the, the VESPA workshop, how uh, it is important uh, for uh, and how we can benefit from accessing uh, heterogeneous data from a very different place, thanks to the virtual observatory, with uh, limited effort, with uh, maximum benefit. Uh, and it was important for us to develop this uh, in that spirit. And we, we were able to do that uh, successfully for uh, most of the services. Uh, and so you can also benefit from these services to all the virtual observatory architecture, in particular the, the tools and the archives uh, to, 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 to complement uh, and uh, make your study uh, even richer. At the end of the first program, we had some liaison with uh, the main actor of the, of the field. For those of you who know, ESA is also developing the Space Situation Awareness, the Space Weather Network, where all the tools, uh, where all the tools developed for Earth are, uh, are uh, usable, are make, made usable for the community. So we linked some of our services to that particular uh, program so that uh, we can reach uh, many more uh, actors and, uh, and uh, person interested by this development. We also linked our development with uh, the previous or current uh, programs uh, funded by the European Commission, in particular IMPEX, maybe Sebastian will touch a bit about it, which was a program in order to, to develop numerical uh, simulations uh, to complement the, uh, the observational data and enable you to, to work uh, virtually uh, with, uh, with the data. Uh, and also we link that with the Community Coordinating Modeling set Center in the, in the United States, and some of you may, may know it. So this is what was done uh, at that time. Uh, you can uh, look at, uh, at uh, all of them from the portal I've described. And uh, if you are interested uh, by any of them, feel free to, to contact, uh, throw me uh, the, the main uh, service provider. Uh, we always uh, encourage uh, user feedback uh, because this is important to to check uh, we are uh, used, usable, and uh, it is al always very pleasant to see we serve the, the community, of course. So uh, here I illustrate the space weather um, network developed by uh, ISA. Uh, in the space situation awareness, where you can see the prop tool or also the Helio Propa tool uh, ingested uh, inside this, uh, this, uh, this bigger infrastructure. And uh, if you are interested, uh, mainly uh, at Earth, you can really go uh, and benefit from many, many tools developed uh, since uh, uh, tens uh, of years uh, by uh, the community and, and, uh, and uh, under the, the ISA uh, flag now. So 
when the planetary space weather services and the former European program stopped, we had the, we are lucky to have the, the next program uh, proposed and funded. So uh, the current Europlanet 2024 research infrastructure, and we uh, trans and we benefited uh, from that program in order to to even uh, make uh, more services in order to to study uh, uh, sun planet interaction. So this was where a spider came following uh, this uh, PSWS service. In particular, I illustrate here how um, uh, we thought we could make even more to enable the users to use uh, observational data and to link them to uh, digital environment and numerical simulations. So this is a ISA web story uh, where they really uh, called uh, exploring planetary plasma environment from your laptop when they discuss this particular architecture. Uh, so he, and they stated it was important to provide new ways to explore our solar system also to planning future missions and inspiring the next generation of space researcher by connecting some um, uh, simulations lattice to tools like 3d view uh, and show how much scientists and engineers can gain from combining observations and simulations and so this was really the spirit uh, of our community when we uh, decided to, to to further develop planetary space weather with, uh, with spider in the States, uh, some of you know, the, this Community Coordinating Modeling Center, where they, they, they store, uh, archive, make uh, use, used and usable a lot of uh, numerical simulations uh, for the sun, the heliosphere, the planets. You can see here uh, all the, some services uh, describe and uh, make available to the community. There is a lot of funding uh, in the States for that. Uh, and they developed run and request, instant run, real time run from those systems. And so we really wanted to try to to develop uh, uh, a prototype of uh, of such a system in Europe, uh, uh, more modestly, but at least uh, to to have the the seeds for that at the end of this particular program. And that was our uh, our. Uh, our dream to have a European like a small CCMC uh, uh, in Europe for planetary uh, uh, sun interactions because uh, CCMC is mainly targeting uh, Earth uh, and planets are always uh, lagging behind. So that's why we, we think we have the, an opportunity for that. So that's where Spider came. This is a portal you can access with uh, uh, the, um, the uh, address. Uh, here, it is already uh, quite popular. You find again, like for PSWS, the various uh, domain we develop, prediction, modeling, database, some presentation and news. And you can, from that a portal, reach all the services we, we have developed. So this is currently uh, prototyped, made operational. We are uh, at year three of the program. Uh, the uh, main uh, providers and developers are CNRS, Wigner, Onera, you will see uh, Sébastien uh, in, a few, in a few minutes, University College London, IRF uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Sweden, and Observatoire de, de Paris uh, for, uh, for the, in particular, the Virtual Observatory and, uh, and the Run and Request Architecture. We uh, extended the PSWS uh, services with six uh, new services prototype and operational at the moment. One about uh, run and request uh, to model uh, Jupiter uh, moon exosphere and Mercury exosphere in strong uh, link with uh, JUICE and BepiCovambo. And this is developed by uh, our Italian colleagues at uh, INAF. One uh, developed by Onera, you will see it's about spacecraft plasma interaction. Um, software in connection with uh, observational data uh, ingested in, uh, in different tools uh, for the program. One uh, run and request for particle tracing models, mainly at, uh, at uh, Jupiter, uh, following the magneto disk run and request uh, developed during the previous program and targeting uh, the JUICE mission, which is in cruise to, to reach Jupiter in, in a few years. And two, uh, and a new domain about database. Uh, for high energy particle flux proxy developed by our Swedish colleagues, or for simulations, uh, here again targeting Mercury and, and Jupiter. And then an extension of the Heliopropa service developed previously 
to ingest uh, as input parameter the new solar orbiter uh, data uh, coming since uh, solar orbiter was launched at the start of this uh, of this uh, new uh, Europe Planet program. So here you can see uh, how we we targeted the the, the big uh, and main uh, space mission uh, at that time. So Bepi Colombo, Drus, in close to Mercury and Jupiter. They are cornerstone or large class missions. So we are sure they will attract a lot of interest and a, a, a big community. Mars Express, Venus Express, and Rosetta, which were very um, uh, visible missions uh, from um, ISA around Venus, Mars, or uh, uh, Comet. Mars Express is still in operation. Uh, and so um, this is important to, to capitalize on, on this mission and their uh, unique observations. And Solar Orbiter, which is a heliospheric mission, but with um, some uh, potential benefit for the planetary space missions and the planetary communities. And again, our users, scientists, amateurs, space agencies, and space industries uh, trying to link uh, and yes between uh, all of them. So our Italian colleagues at INAF uh, made their uh, model of the exosphere of Mercury and uh, giant planet moons, in particular Europa, available uh, through our uh, run and request uh, system. This is operating. You can launch a run at Mercury or you can launch a run at Europa if you wish, in order to study how the, the exosphere of the, of the body is uh, disturbed by uh, solar wind disturbance or by the environment of Jupiter at various locations at various times. And this is recently published by Martina Moroni, a PhD student um, partially funded by the program. And you can access the, the paper in order to, to, to learn more about this, uh, this uh, service. It was also a service uh, important uh, for the Juno community because uh, you may know that so Juno is the first polar orbiter of Jupiter, as I've said. It's orbiting Jupiter since 2016, and it will orbit Jupiter until 2025, with the extension of the mission targeting flybys of the Galilean moons, which was not the core of the main mission. With the extension, they had the possibility to fly by Ganymede once, Europa once, and Io twice. And so they got very new data for Ganymede and Europa, and so it was in, of interest to link this observational data with our numerical data and with these particular simulations. Then we have this uh, development of the database. We have plasma instrument on board space mission, planetary space mission around Mars, Venus, uh, and uh, 67P. We know that uh, these particular uh, instruments are sensitive to solar radiation to penetrating particles, to energetic particles released in the solar wind by the sun, which uh, interact with the matter and is able to, to cross uh, the, the walls, the housing of the instrument, reach the detector and create a signal, be measured, and this signal is uh, very often a noise. So we, scientists doesn't want to use the noise, they use a scientific signal, and they want to have instrument with good signal to noise ratio. So this noise was uh, usually removed, but it was never used by scientists. So together with Yoshifumi Futana at IRF Sweden, we developed a database of this um, uh, partic particle uh, penetrating background from, uh, from the instrument around Mars, uh, on board Mars Express, around Venus, on board Venus Express, around 67P uh, uh, around the, uh, uh, with Rosetta. And this database was used uh, in order to, to make science. So Yoshifumi used all the background counts uh, coming at, uh, at VEX and MEX in order to, to follow the solar cycle and the galactic um, cosmic rays uh, uh, perturbations, contaminations, to show how these um, particular events interact with the planetary body from its, with its surface and, uh, and atmosphere. And he was able to demonstrate that you really can, can get a lot from this uh, buried treasure um, uh, coming from this, uh, this uh, background uh, noise uh, data. So we are glad to have now the archive and you can use it in order to, to check this, uh, the sun-planet interactions and uh, the effect uh, on the instrument. This is also of importance to predict the efficiency of detection of high energy particles uh, by detectors on board these um, charged particle detectors. This will be something very important at uh, Jupiter with JUICE because uh, the penetrating particles um, coming from the radiation belt of the planet are very intense uh, 
uh, are uh, in large quantity. So they will create a lot of noise and we need to, to understand how the detector reacts to this noise. And uh, following the article of uh, Yoshifumi, we are also in, uh, in contact uh, at the moment uh, distant, but hopefully closer uh, in the coming uh, years in order to try to do with um, uh, the NASA Maven mission or other missions uh, to archive their uh, background uh, count um, data and make uh, them accessible and usable by the community. We had uh, also at that time, uh, at, uh, during the, the program, the flyby of Venus by Bepi Colombo and Solar Orbiter. It's not a dual flyby, but it's almost a dual flyby because there was only one day between the two flybys. And it was very interesting for us because at the same time, you could use either Bepi Colombo as a um, virtual, as a solar wind monitor for a solar orbiter at Venus or a solar orbiter as a solar wind monitor for Bepi Colombo. Uh, flying by Venus. And we have done that with Moa Person, a young uh, female postdoc funded uh, by, the, by the program. She used the two spacecraft, Solar Orbiter and Bepi Colombo, seven instruments on board these two, um, uh, orbi uh, these two um, spacecraft in order to, to decipher and study the, the Sun-Venus interactions in detail for the first time. We uh, benefited from a very quiet solar wind at that time, as measured by Solar Orbiter, and during quiet solar wind, we were really able to look at the interaction of the solar wind with, with the planet uh, Venus, which does not have an intrinsic magnetic field, which does not have crystal magnetic field like Mars. So in an environment uh, free of any magnetic disturbance, except those from the interplanetary medium and the solar wind. And this is uh, of importance also for uh, uh, the study of, of uh, star exoplanet interactions, which will uh, be uh, made available uh, in the future with observation and uh, simulations. And so we used our Heliopropa service in order to, to check at that particular time the prediction of our system for the Bepi Colombo Venus flyby. You can show here uh, that the system predicts um, a very quiet solar wind in terms of dynamic pressure and a magnetic field at the time of the flyby as confirmed in situ by the solar wind uh, data obtained by solar orbiter. And so this was a, a nice uh, opportunity for us to do science, but also to check the reliability of the system. Two days before the flyby, there was also a press release by ISA. At the time of the flyby of Bepi Colombo, the solar wind was quiet, but it was not before. We had these large coronal mass ejections observed by coronagraph on board, uh, on board SOHO for example, reaching solar orbiter and making uh, the system to enter safe mode in order to protect himself from this particular uh, 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 solar wind disturbance. And so that's why uh, it's important to be able to predict and model the arrival of the perturbation to a particular uh, object in the solar system. And uh, we were fortunate also to experience that uh, at that time and, uh, and check with our system that uh, for this particular event, the Heliopropa service predicts the arrival of the solar wind disturbance almost at the time it was observed in situ by a solar orbiter. So this was also a nice thing to, to be able to do uh, two years ago. In terms of uh, liaison, this time for this particular program, as you can imagine with the service I have uh, described, the six services developed, we target in particular the BP Colombo and the Mercury community. This is a, a big mission with uh, ESA and JAXA involvement a large community, and so we we, we developed services uh, specifically, uh, in particular for this community. Then we had also the Juno and uh, Juice and Jupiter community, which is an even larger community, uh, which uh, will have a very uh, uh, complex mission reaching Jupiter uh, uh, in a few years. And so we'll yes with them in order to show how the services can be used and how we can fit their, uh, their own uh, needs. So liaison with Solar Orbiter, it's a ISA-led heliospheric mission. It's an important mission for the community uh, to study the sun, to study the, the heliosphere, but also for us to make use of their data in order to, to, to improve and extend our service uh, uh, with, uh, with even more uh, constraint coming from the inner heliosphere uh, of uh, the solar system to be propagated to, to the outer heliosphere. And also, of course, ISA SwissNet, because this is where we, we need to, to show that uh, uh, there is not only Earth, but also the other planets 
that have to be uh, targeted uh, when we develop and we think about uh, space weather. You can come to your planet, uh, planetary science conference in the past, uh, in the next years, where we always will try to organize a session dedicated to this particular uh, uh, topic. And for those of you who are really into uh, space weather, we have uh, uh, a spider booth and a topical session proposed at the European Space Weather Week in November 2023 in Toulouse, where we can discuss live, show the services, uh, and uh, attract even more interest and attention to uh, space weather at planets. In terms of sustainability, each of our services is developed by a, a single uh, provider, and so we hope to be able to maintain all of them because this is much more simpler when you have only one uh, um, single provider. We have a clear uh, and a future missions uh, targeting uh, the object we focus on, so we hope to have a, a bright future and to are really used by the community. And also the system is done so that we can easily extend it or adapt it to new missions and models uh, in particular that uh, will come. So if you have uh, models, data, and you are interested to, to join this, uh, this community effort, please uh, contact us and we will uh, show how to, 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 to take advantage of what we have already uh, developed uh, for, uh, for your own uh, services. And I think uh, I stop here. I will be glad to take uh, any question or uh, comments. Uh, we can also do that in the in the second part of the of the workshop uh, in a few in a few in a few minutes. But uh, thank you very much for your for your attention and feel free to contact us and visit the the portal and the and use the service uh, and provide us feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicora. Uh, yes, this is very, really impressive, this huge database, which helps a lot. For example, you, if you want to make multi-spacecraft um, analysis, you don't have to go to all spacecraft data and, and download and different formats, but it is really homogenized. And also all the tools, the planetary space weather services, and now this newly developed SPIDER. Um, so you can really uh, manipulate the data with tools, visualize, there are visualization tools, collection of models, and there are also the predictions. And uh, one important aspect is uh, not only the predictions um, to the planets, but also we can, like, well, anywhere uh, the prediction can be done, uh, how the uh, ambient plasma will be. And what is also very important in uh, this um, uh, observational science, how the spacecraft are uh, affected uh, by the ambient plasma. And the next talk will be, uh, you have a microphone, will be given by Sebastian Hess from, from Onera on their modeling. Do you hear me? Okay. Uh, so, uh... Thank you, uh, Nicola and uh, Andra, to invite me to to speak. Up. Um, so I will uh, speak about what we did in um, uh, at Onera uh, in Spider. Uh, so yes, uh, but uh, first, as an introduction, I, I would like to uh, discuss of what where um, uh, Spider in uh, tools intervene in a, a typical study of. Uh, some measurements made by uh, by uh, spacecraft. So, uh, as an example, we take you can take uh, Baby Colombo uh, looking at uh, a Mercury. So the uh, the, the spacecraft will, will uh, make some uh, measurements, but to understand to relate them to the big picture of uh, what is happening around Mercury and how, do, how it relates to uh, to the solar wind interaction uh, with uh, with the Mercury uh, magnetosphere. You want to uh, relate these measurements to uh, well, solar wind measurements that uh, have been uh, made uh, somewhere else in the solar system. So first, what you will do is to try to retrieve the uh, solar wind uh, parameters that uh, were in front of, of Mercury. So you will uh, use the Helio Propa tool or propagation tool that was uh, uh, discussed by, uh, by uh, Nicola just before. And then uh, it will uh, it will give you the the status of the solar wind in front of the magnetosphere. But if you want to understand what happened in the magnetosphere, you want 
to uh, model the magnetosphere and you will also need to, to model the exosphere because it serves as an input for the magnetosphere modeling. And then once you, you get some idea of the, the magnetosphere, to relate uh, this state to the measurement which was done by, by your instruments, uh, you want to uh, model the spacecraft, uh, the, the influence of the environment on your uh, spacecraft itself, so you can uh, understand the, your measurements. So uh, here are the, the, the different, the different um, models which are in SPIDER and how they relate together to uh, really um, understand the measurements which are done by, by spacecraft. So uh, in, in the next, I will uh, only talk about uh, magnetosphere modeling and spacecraft modeling uh, because it's the, uh, I worked most on the spacecraft modeling, but with some interaction with the magnetosphere modeling, and it's also the only two uh, tools that I really uh, know in a spider. So it would be hard for me to to discuss about uh, something else. Um, so the first one, uh, which uh, simulates the environment, the magnetosphere of the um, the, the planets, but uh, uh, more generally, the planetary environments. So it simulates the plasma flows around the celestial bodies. Here, for example, you have simulation of the interaction of the solar wind with Mars. Uh, you have ions and neutrons which are simulated as particles and electrons just as a neutralizing free, neutralizing free sorry. Uh, it takes into account the chemistry, um, uh, so the charge exchange, ionization, recombination between uh, ions and neutrons. Uh, th that's where the exosphere uh, models intervene, for example, as an input for this, uh, this uh, model. Uh, it was developed by uh, LACMOS and LPP in France. Uh, so it's a very heavily parallelized code. Uh, to, to perform such uh, simulations, you need hundreds of, of cores and a few days of simulation. And uh, the simulation results and results are auto automatically archived in a standardized way which was defined in the IMPACT uh, project, uh, so it was a FP7 uh, project. And uh, now this, uh, the work which was done in the IMPACT uh, project was um, reversed to the space community. So uh, uh, it's now uh, uh, led by the ID uh, the association. Uh, the, to, to simulate the spacecraft's interaction with the, with the environment, we use another software, which is a SPIS, so it's a spacecraft plasma interaction software, which was uh, which is an open source software which is developed by Onera and a small uh, SME, which is Artinum, uh, in France, with support from uh, ESA and uh, CNES. So it simulates the charged states and the plasma environment of the spacecraft. Here you have, for example, a simulation of the potential uh, electric potential on the surface and in the plasma around the solar orbiter when it will be uh, at the closest to distance from the sun. Uh, so it's uh, taking into account the geometry, materials, and plasma conditions, and gives a charged state and the local plasma environment. So it's a multi-physics code. Uh, you can simulate plasma, radiation, dust, uh, contamination, erosion. There's a lot of, um, of uh, models. Um, so it was originally developed for industrials to, to uh, assess the risk of electrostatic discharge on solar panels. But it's more and more used uh, by the scientific community uh, to uh, look at the impact of the charging of the spacecraft on the plasma instruments. So for example, this study of uh, solar orbiter was done to pre-calibrate uh, the, the answer of the electric field measurements on, uh, on the solar orbiter. Uh, so we can simulate uh, instrumental observation. We have many models to, to simulate the answers of uh, the answers of instruments uh, in relation to the environment. But uh, what we need uh, to do so, so is uh, accurate description uh, of the environment as inputs. So uh, this uh, this can come either from uh, this uh, uh, environment description can come from uh, measurements, but it can also come from uh, simulations. So uh, we can use as inputs uh, simulations uh, made by uh, the magnetospheric model. So for example, we did that uh, for uh, Ganymede, for an orbit of juice around Ganymede. Um, and uh, so you can see on the top, it's a picture from the TradeView tool uh, uh, at CDPP showing uh, the, I 
think it's uh, oxygen uh, ions around um, Ganymede with uh, the trajectory of, uh, of uh, juice around it and uh, the magnetic field lines uh, wrapping uh, around Ganymede. And so uh, the magnetospheric tools uh, tool uh, gave us the density, temperature, and so, uh, and so on of the, um, of the different populations that we injected uh, in the in the SPICE model, and we uh, were able to model the charge level of uh, the spacecraft uh, along uh, one orbit. Uh, okay, I will come back on uh, on, on this kind of uh, study. Uh, Later, but typically that's what we can do to uh, prepare uh, missions. So uh, we know what we can expect uh, as a measurement or perturbation to, to the instruments on uh, such orbits. Uh, we can also uh, use this, uh, the, these um, tools to exploit uh, missions uh, because uh, once you you, uh, you you make measurements in situ uh, with a mission then you can uh, use this uh, environment to inject it in the uh, SPICE tool, which will give you a more accurate uh, uh, estimate of the charging of the instrument and on the impact of the instrument. Um, so we can do it in advance, uh, as I said, uh, to, uh, to uh, estimate the effect of charging on the antenna of the orbiter. But for the same mission, uh, in advance also, we, we uh, uh, looked at the effect of charging on uh, the particle detectors. And when you look at the trajectories of particles, so it's a picture uh, on the uh, bottom uh, left uh, of your screen. Uh, so it's a trajectory of electrons at uh, low energy, uh, which are detected by the, uh, by the particle detector. You see that the particles are coming from every, everywhere, but not necessarily uh, in, uh, of the direction you are putting at. And uh, typically, the, the transfer function um, uh, at low energy for, for particles uh, makes that you, the direction in which you think you are looking is not the direction in which you are really looking. And sometimes it's totally the opposite direction. So this is uh, things that uh, you have to take into account when you, uh, you try to exploit the, the, the instrument uh, results. And finally, so I, I said it a bit uh, earlier, but uh, all these uh, simulations help to provide uh, context to the mission. Um, if you fit uh, some uh, measure to, uh, to the simulation, then you can extrapolate to a larger spatial and temporal uh, scales. Uh, you can also uh, have access to parameters which are not measured by the spacecraft. For example, for um, Mars Express, you can access, uh, have some idea of the uh, magnetic field uh, direction, which is not measured uh, directly by the, the spacecraft. And uh, something that, that you can only do with, uh, with a simulation is to separate the particles from their origin. So uh, to separate um, hydrogen coming from the solar wind, from uh, hydrogen coming from water or Mars or some, stuff like this, which is not possible with the uh, measurements. Uh, so, in, you have some uh, some important uh, reason to, to perform this uh, simulation when you, you want to understand your, your measurements. Uh, so all these uh, numerical models uh, have inputs. They must be fed by, uh, by uh, data. And uh, when you, you come back to uh, all these, uh, these uh, models that I spoke earlier, which are present in the SPIDER uh, uh, work package, you see that they feed each other, but uh, they are also uh, feed, uh, feed, uh, inputs which come from, from measurements. And models can uh, be coupled. For example, exosphere and uh, magnetic uh, models may be coupled because they can interact. Uh, neutrals can play on ions and ions on neutrals. And so you, you have to manage all these uh, communications between the different models if you want to, to perform such a study. So there are two ways to, uh, to do it. Uh, when you talk to most people, they, they said, oh, I don't want to use your, your tools, they are complicated. I would just uh, do it the uh, old way, uh, do it by hand, and uh, it will be simpler. Well, it may appear so, but when you are looking in the details, it means that you have to find the people who have the data. You have to find the data, find the people, know how to process the data, 
uh, the same for, for models. And in the end, it's just a nightmare. You, it takes you uh, one year just to make uh, one, uh, one point. So it's, uh, it's quite complicated. So uh, of course, the tools may appear at first to be more complicated to use than doing by, it by hand, but it's, uh, it's really uh, much faster. And in particular, because uh, what is behind all these tools, what is behind all, uh, all the work we are doing in Spider and also in Vespa, is to try to standardize uh, the access to the data and the uh, format of the data, how to exchange between uh, the different tools. So if you want to, to, to do uh, the, 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 the study uh, that I described earlier, you just have to use some tools like Vespa or Amda, who also provide access to the data and search on data. And you can uh, match the, uh, find the data and uh, match the different uh, uh, simulations which are pre-computed to find the best uh, simulation that fits your data in a few minutes, if you are used to it. And uh, what I will present here is uh, how, to, how we integrated um, the access to data in space to be able to, uh, to retrieve the, the data and import it uh, automatically uh, in space. So that's the work we, we did with Inspider. Uh, what is it? Yes, uh, just uh, uh, some uh, things. So, uh, uh, when you have a fast code or relatively fast code which demands a specific platform, then uh, you want to, to propose run on demand for slow codes like uh, magnetospheric modeling, for example. Uh, run on demand is quite complicated, so you prefer to, uh, to, to provide pre computed simulations. You try to, to uh, simulate all the possible uh, parameters and uh, provide the user with a database. And uh, for a medium sized code like SPIS, for which you don't have a, you don't need specific platform and the computation may stand just for a few hours. You prefer to let the user run uh, the code and you just provide uh, some uh, access to the data, way to exchange the, the data between uh, uh, databases and uh, tools and, uh, and the code. So that's what we did. Uh, so how do we ingest data in space? Uh, so we build on a, on a pre-existing uh, standards. So for uh, space, it's a specific standard. So it's a space uh, standard for describing uh, data. Uh, but to retrieve the, the data, you use uh, gateways. So either uh, AMDA at CDPP, CDI Web provided by NASA. And uh, in the future, uh, we want to use uh, Vespa which will provide a registry for, uh, for space and uh, access to the, to the data. Uh, and then once we, we, we know, uh, we have the list of the available uh, measurements, the details of uh, the content of the measurements is provided by space, which uh, provide a very de detailed uh, information about the content of the, of the data that we can use uh, to uh, help the import in, uh, in space. Uh, so space is a data model uh, which has been develop developed for uh, more than 15 years by an international al alliance uh, led by uh, NASA. Uh, it targets heliosphere, magnetospheres and plasma environments. Uh, it provides a standardized way to describe which data sets exist, uh, what they are about, how they were acquired, so you, have, uh, you can retrieve all the information about uh, the mission, the instrument and the people who, who are do uh, doing the the measurements, uh, where to find them, uh, in, in which formats of the data, which is uh, quite important when you want to automatize the imports. But it, uh, it tells you where uh, to find them, but not necessarily how, which is uh, an issue, and uh, which explains also why we have to use uh, uh, tools like uh, CDI Web or, or uh, AMDA. And uh, it also gives the content of the data sets, so the, the physical meaning of uh, the content of the data sets, the units, and uh, the fields. So the question is that uh, how do we uh, automatically uh, import uh, data in, uh, in space uh, using this uh, model? Uh, so first, uh, we want to, uh, to display all the available uh, resources which are uh, regist uh, registered at the HPD, which is uh, the repository for the uh, space, uh, space uh, metadata. 
so it uh, requires a passable, uh, passable registry, which is broken at uh, HPD. But uh, in the future, we, uh, we propose to um, IDA to use uh, EPN tap, so uh, it may appear in Vespa in a, in a few years, which will be great. Uh, it requires a standardized way to access the data. So today it's either AMDA or CDA web. And for simulation, it's uh, still the Impex uh, portal which provides uh, the, the access. Uh, so the, the space uh, formats allow, uh, provide a human readable and a computer passable description of the data file content. So you can uh, you can uh, navigate um, as a user in the in the available uh, uh, data to retrieve uh, the one you, you're interested in, and you can follow the links to to see uh, information about missions and, and stuff like this. Uh, so the metadata are, uh, allows to identify uh, and order the, the, the resources, and the uh, keyword, metadata keywords allow also to uh, identify the physical meaning of the fields, which is used by the tool to to tell the user which uh, fields can be imported by uh, by space. So I won't uh, enter too much in the detail because it's boring. But uh, there are the, the space uh, formats provide uh, ways to describe the data sets and the simulation model. So uh, in, a, in a ways which are uh, more or less uh, similar. So you can relatively easily match uh, the data which are in the data sets uh, and the data which are needed as input for, for the models. Uh, well, uh, this is details, but uh, it's very, very powerful. You you have a very um, you, you can uh, go uh, quite deep in the in the comparison between the the accessible uh, the existing data and the input properties. But uh, to to have an exact match, you you still need a user who really understand what uh, what it's all about to to. Uh, to, to be sure that you are not doing uh, silly things. So as an example of uh, input and output matching, uh, here is an, uh, I think it's uh, Themis, yes, uh, Themis B uh, FGM um, data set. So it's a magnetic field uh, uh, measured by the Themis spacecraft, uh, which can be used by, by SPIS. It can, uh, SPIS can use a magnetic field as an input uh, to, to uh, model the plasma. Uh, but uh, SPIS uh, needs uh, this field to be described as a vector because it's a 3D uh, model. So uh, when you, you go to the Themis uh, data sets, you see that there are uh, different fields uh, which are provided. And you see that there's uh, only uh, two of them which have this uh, green uh, arrow on the, on the side because uh, SPIS used the, um, the space keywords to recognize that first it was a, a magnetic field. So it's something he can understand, and it's uh, described as a vector, so it's something he can uh, use really um, uh, and import. The third uh, field is the uh, magnitude of the ma magnetic field, so he can understand magnetic field, but he cannot uh, do anything with the total uh, magnitude of the magnetic field because he, he wouldn't know how to apply it in the simu 3D simulation. So he, he can uh, pre-filter what are the uh, fields that you can import because it makes sense for, for it. Uh, it can go even further if you look at the uh, particles. So th there are some description, so a very simple description of the kind of particles uh, uh, to which uh, fields are uh, corresponding. So at least uh, uh, it makes a difference between electrons, protons, ions, dust, and, and so on. So uh, when you, you want to import this, uh, this data, uh, SPIS will automatically recognize that at least it's ion or an electron and uh, propose you the best treated um, uh, population uh, to which it should be uh, imported. Uh, so once you, you imported all the data, so w once you, you, uh, you, you've provided, uh, you, you've selected the field uh, you, you want to uh, import, you provide a starting a start date to uh, and a duration uh, for the simulation, and uh, you can import it in uh, in space. So it appears as a table uh, in, in the parameters, 
and uh, you can uh, run the simulation. So for example, here it's uh, some simulation, I think, of uh, Themis, uh, where it, pray, it brought uh, some, uh, some boundary, and you see that uh, the plasma density of electrons and ions, so I think electrons, uh, electrons are in green, uh, ions in, in red are uh, evolving during the, the simulation. So you can use uh, this, uh, you can retrieve this uh, behavior in space uh, for your uh, simulation. Um, and then you can export the uh, results as a VO table, uh, with, uh, which incorporates the space description for use in uh, other database and, and databases and tools, uh, such as AMDA, for example. Uh, so I, I won't uh, show it here, but you can also uh, use uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this, uh, uh, user interface to import a uh, simulated environment from, from the Impex uh, project. And uh, so the, the view connection, the space itself is available at a link I, I provided you with uh, yesterday. I don't know if some of you uh, looked at it. Uh, but the view uh, connection uh, developed in uh, your plant is uh, available separately as an optional module at uh, this address which doesn't work now because I tried to update it uh, yesterday. I just broke the link, sorry. But uh, <laughs> I, I will repair it uh, as that. Uh, so uh, I think there will be a short demonstration uh, in the second uh, session of uh, Spider. So we can discuss it later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions also for the previous talk, Nicolas, do you hear? Sh shall I start with questions? Uh, do you validate your models, for example, for solar orbiter? Do you see now how it worked? Because you said you would did predictions. Um... Well, actually, uh, I'm not sure. I, I know it's used by the... So, so this, uh, this study was made in uh, relation with the team which is uh, building the instrument and exploiting the instrument. So I know they uh, continue to, to perform uh, simulations, but I have uh, I no uh, feedback on uh, this uh, for now. So uh, it's... We'll see. <laughs> we'll uh, wait for some papers, uh, I think. To come out. But the code itself has been uh, strongly validated um, uh, against a lot of uh, measurements which were done otherwise. So. But uh, I think it's the first time for, for, for uh, antennas, uh, for this, this kind of in instrument. So uh, we will see uh, feedbacks from uh, the team. Thank you. Thank Are there any other questions? I, I found many. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you just That's said that maybe. for That's ah, yeah, no. my colleague. Okay. Um, you said that uh, on Max there is no magnetic field measurement, and you said that you can even have a guess about that. Do you have already a database about that? Or? Yeah. Uh, I can use yes, this. Yes. Okay. Sure. Uh, yes. I, actually, uh, that was one of the goals of the Impex uh, project. So there were a lot of uh, simulations uh, made for um, for Mars, and it's available. Uh, so I, I can provide you with the link, but it's uh, available on the Lattice uh, database uh, at um, at Latmos. So it's possible, yeah. probably, even yeah. to use because. That's like doing particle physics without magnetic. Yeah, you, you, it's uh, there's an interface uh, in AMDA, so I guess in AMDA you can uh, have uh, direct access to these uh, simulations. Mm -hmm. But uh, probably uh, Nicola can confirm it uh, or not. Yes, you can. Uh, I will try to show you uh, later. You can access uh, numerical simulation from uh, AMDA and also uh, proxy. And uh, we have also implemented some uh, analytical models of magnetic fields uh, at Mars, Jupiter, etc. So this is something that you can uh, you can use uh, when you don't have uh, in situ measurements. Okay, very good. So, so can you show it in the next session? Will you still be here? Okay, very good. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, others? Okay, uh, then question, then can you come back for the next session? Like, I'm still alive. <laughs> Yes. So, because then we will show you how it works and then. Sorry, it's very noisy here. Okay, then uh, I would say that we go for a break and then see you here. Thank you.